Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and welcome to part four of four of my numerology series um, on numerology and the tarot. And once again, if you are not familiar with what we're doing today, um, I encourage you to go back in the playlist and look at my first video in this series where I explain um, in great detail kind of what I'm trying to accomplish here and how I'm going to go about that. And with that said, I'm going to dive right in. So today we're going to do the eights, nine, and tens, eightses, nineses, and tenses. And uh, <laughs> we're, uh, I'm kind of burned out, which actually really fits the theme of this video. So we'll get into that. Um, but uh, we're going to look at those individually as we have been. We're going to look at some comparative cards from other decks. And then we're also going to then look at that sequence of eight, nine, and ten together at the end. Okay, so let's go down on the table and take a look at these cards and of course in the rws we have strength as number eight now of course this deviates from the traditional marseille and that justice would have been eight and then strength would have been 11. Um, i actually prefer strength at eight for pictorial cards for scenic cards and that is because i think that the number eight uh, reflects well with the number four and with strength and the emperor better than justice does it might be splitting hairs to say that but um, as i explain my thinking around this uh, it may make more sense so um, while i don't have any preference uh in terms of um, other kinds of decks i do like eight and and strength at this position strength of course um referring to physical strength mental strength uh stamina all those kinds of things also force um in the french decks this this card is called force and so um, that has a different kind of connotation and then older decks often call it fortitude um, which also has a different connotation so kind of blending those three concepts together um, and looking at this through that lens what's interesting to me again is that the the eights in the suit cards seem to not really have anything to do with those concepts so for the golden dawn keywords for the eight of wands we have swiftness for the eight of cups abandoned success Eight of Cups is Shortened Force, and Eight of Pentacles is Prudence, which is another one of the virtues, but it's a different one. So why you would put that with Strength, I have no idea. Um, a lot of the, what the Golden Dawn was doing doesn't make any sense to me, and part of that's because I haven't studied their methods in detail. So uh, we'll kind of disregard their keywords, but I did want to also look at the Companion card for Strength, which would be 18, the Moon. Um, and again, this is one where I have to kind of stretch my thinking to really draw any parallels between uh, strength and the moon. One of the interpretations for strength, and one of the things uh, Kathleen Matthews even talks about um, in terms of fortitude as a virtue, is about controlling yourself. Um, you know, controlling your wild impulses. And, and the esotericists seem to really glom onto that as well, you know, this, that this... This woman has all of these bestial qualities and her her lust and whatever crowley was actually renamed this card lust um i think for that reason you know he he was very into like sexual power and blah 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 that kind of connotation here with her trying to tame this wild animal um and the analogy to like taming the wild uh, pursuits inside yourself. I think that actually ties in with the moon. If you look at the moon and it's, you know, a, a, a domesticated dog and a wolf or two wolves howling at the moon. So allowing your your inner wild animal to come out at night and, and you know, to have more wild abandon. Perhaps I can draw a parallel there. But like the moon and fortitude or the moon and concentration or the moon and uh, and diligence or something like that. I, I would have a hard time drawing a parallel else there. So uh, if you have any other ideas about a relationship between these two cards, I would love to hear your opinions. Um, since I have nothing pithy to say about that, I will move on to these cards. Um, now, eights are interesting numerologically. They, for me, they represent double stability. So again, that's why I like strength for eight where you know the, the emperor the four is stability eight is double that 
Um, so it's even more dug in, it's even more solid. I was talking about in the fours how it's the first opportunity if you have four points you can make a stable three-dimensional object which is a three-sided pyramid so you have a triangle and then you have a point at the top and that creates your your base foundation of three with with the fourth point at the top that's the stable foundation so with eight you can get a cube um, right you, you have four uh, four points on, on one side and four points on the other and draw all the lines between all the points um, to draw up all the squares and then you um, you get that cube shape and so that's very like locked in and for me the kind of the keywords around eights that I get really are related to this concept of strength or fortitude and it's sort of like an intensity an intensity of concentration an intensity of stability an intensity of persistence of discipline this nose to the grindstone kind of attitude immovability so if you think the emperor was conservative you should really like take a look at this right this is really can be really really stuck uh, stuck in a rut that kind of thing but it can also on a positive side it can represent things like learning through repetition growing your self-knowledge holding power and using power wisely digging in for the long haul you know setting yourself a, a big goal or a long-term project that you know is going to be very difficult and saying yep i'm up for this challenge i'm going to be strong i'm going to be persistent i'm going to get through this having that self-confidence to do that and i thought about you know stages of life and things um, for some of these and 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 here i would say starting your phd you know, you've, you've gone through some education, you've gotten your master's degree or whatever your preliminary degree was that you needed to get your PhD, and now you've decided to take on this challenge and you know it's gonna be a ton of work, and but you're like, yep, I'm up for it. I also see this as, again, you know, if you think about the shape of, of an eight, uh, not not the not the symbol eight, but of eight things or like double stability um, or two squares stacked on top of each other. Um, it's coordination. It's making sure you have all your ducks in a row before you set out on this big venture. So I like that the uh, eights, for example, uh, the eight of wands in the RWS, even though there are no figures here, they're all in parallel and they're all headed in the same direction. So it can also be about coordinating a project with multiple people or multiple input for me. It's, it contrasts with the five of wands where you have those five people and all the sticks are crossed and everything's poking into everything else and nothing's working right. Now you have everything lined up well and it's all headed in the same direction. We have the same goal. We've got a strategic plan or, you know, whatever that is. Abandon success and this idea of the eight of cups has always bothered me and I still kind of have to work around it creatively creatively. Um, the image that I would prefer for the Eight of Cups is this one, um, because to me, this guy is very grounded. He's very stable. His posture, he's got his hands crossed. He's sitting, you know, upright. If you just had eight cups back here instead of nine, this would be a great image for this. It'd be like, yeah, I'm in emotional control, or I'm stuck in my emotions, or I like, you know, I'm not very emotional at all because I always feel the same way or something like that. You know, you can interpret this different ways. And then you could have this as a more dynamic nine kind of number, which um, odd numbers are more about movement and evens are more about stability for me. But that being said, you know, I can kind of work with this. Um, I think abandoned success is like very specific and very weird. And I think a lot of people interpret this um, certainly a lot of tarot books I, that I've read interpret this car as like walking away from what's not serving you. Well, that's not really what abandoned success means. It means you were good at something and then you were just like, yeah, I'm done. And so in that way, it's kind of a doubling of the negative side of the four of cups. You know, if that guy under the tree is morose or suffering from ennui or something like that, then this is even worse because now you're like, yeah, I'm just giving up, you know, I'm walking away. I, you know, I can't see that I was successful. And so I'm, I'm just abandoning this project, relationship, whatever it is. So it's hard for me to reconcile this as a, a terribly positive card um, sometimes. And I'm still working on how to make the image make sense in this idea of stability, 
um, strength, fortitude, etc. I suppose what I could say is with the fortitude is that this person's going to push through this kind of clogged emotional state. So if this emotional state is too stable, it's too restrictive, um, it's it's too bogged down, then this person is kind of trying to break free of that and say, you know, okay, I can. I can move on from this. You know, I have the strength. I've recognized the problem and I have the strength and the fortitude to move on from it. That's kind of as good as I can get with the Eight of Cups. So that one really is tricky for me, but that's okay. Shortened force, again, makes no sense to me, but I love this image and I think I am very much an outlier in the way I typically interpret the Eight of Swords. So I do not focus on the fact that she's bound and blindfolded as something that has happened to her. I focus on the fact that she is blind and bound and blindfolded as this is something she has done to herself intentionally. Not that she's stuck in her own thinking and she's making it worse for herself, but she's put a challenge to herself. This is a Houdini kind of situation. Tie me up in a straitjacket, put a padlock, put me underwater. I'm going to get out of it. I'm going to prove to you how good I am. Um, so this is like a self-challenge. This could be something like NaNoWriMo, you know, uh, National Novel Writing Month, or, you know, Doodle a Day, or something like that. Setting yourself a challenge, and then meeting that challenge, um, intentionally set, setting yourself a challenge, is how I, I tend to interpret this. It could be stuckness, it could be entrapment, just like any of the eights, or even the fours could possibly be, you know, that, that sense of stodginess. But I really, I really have a different view of this card than I think a lot of people do. Um, so I'd be interested what you think of that. Um, and then moving on to the Eight of Pentacles, you know, this to me is much more clear uh, and a clear tie back to this idea of strength and fortitude and those other things that I was talking about, like learning through repetition, nose to the grindstone, intense concentration, starting your PhD. You know, okay, you've done one, you're working on the second one, you've got all these other ones left to go. So you know that this is going to be a long haul. And this could be also in reference to something, again, health-related, setting a long-term goal. Um, if you have a big uh, health challenge to overcome, or if you want to make a dramatic shift uh, for yourself in some in some way, or you want to, I don't know, make a really big purchase like buying a piece of property, buying a house, building a house, it, it could refer to that kind of a thing where you have to, to work diligently and consistently and, you know, really be disciplined in, uh, in saving up in order to make to make that happen for yourself. Um, one thing that I also wrote down in my notes from a while ago, and I unfortunately don't have the deck to show you anymore, but I had for a little time uh, the Wild Unknown, and in the guidebook, it's it shows in the Eight of Pentacles metamorphosis of a butterfly, so a butterfly coming out of the chrysalis and unfolding. And what I write I wrote down for that was metamorphosis of the mind. What happens when to your brain when you meditate for a long time? And I don't mean like for four hours hours. I mean like four hours a day for 20 years. Studies have been done uh, now on people who meditate a lot and people who have meditated for years and years and how how their mind is actually different, how their brain waves are different um, and how their brain activity is different. And so through this diligence, through this strength, through this self-confidence, through this concentration and through repetition, doing the th same thing over and over and over again, that is what helps you make that progress um, in that way or change um, change the outcome. Either change your, your gut reaction, change your emotional reaction or your reactive state or change your mental reaction, your thoughts, um, or even change your actions. You know, if you think differently about a situation, then you're more likely to react and act differently about it too. So yeah, the eights are very interesting in that way. Let's look at some comparative examples from other decks. So here we have um, the guy in tarot again. Let's see, this is the earth card, the air card, and the water card. You know, here in the water, again, she's got like a very concentrated look on her face. Um, and I do know people who have this habit of doing a particular physical activity every day that they find therapeutic. And then the long-term results of uh, repeating that has have helped them so much. So let's say, you know, okay, I needed physical therapy and I found that swimming really helped me recover from my injury. And by going swimming every day for five years, I was a finally able to recover from my injury. Eight of air is interesting. Here we have a guy who's maybe uh, leading some sort of blessing or something like that. And 
you know, one of the cardomantic interpretations for eights is groups. Because if you think about uh, playing cards and how the pips are arranged on those, you get sort of two groups of four or you get a big group of eight. And so I like that she's incorporated um, larger groups of people for some of these higher numbers than you see in other cards. A lot of tarot cards don't show, you know, you would never see eight people in a particular card. But I like that she's done that a little bit here. And then Eight of Earth, um, again, you have this idea of someone teaching. So this adult is teaching this child and then, uh, you know, instructing them, okay, now you're going to have to practice and you're going to have to practice this, this drum beat over and over and over and over again until you build up that muscle memory and you're not having to think about that. And then we can come back and we can learn a new drum beat together. And then you're going to go home and practice that one over and over and over until it becomes second nature, nature to you. And just one more set of examples here for our eights from the Fifth Spirit Tarot. Um, I really like this one, this bundle of fireworks that's uh, the fuse has been lit, and so these are all going to go off at once. Certainly like a lot of energy, uh, a big bang, and hopefully a coordinated one. Um, I have a, a friend and neighbor who is a pyrotechnics expert and had um, designed and set up and executed fireworks shows for years for our local town. And that certainly takes a ton of planning and coordination and effort and making, again, making sure that everything's lined up and every, you know everybody on the team is on the same page and that the communication is good so that the safety level is, you know, where it needs to be. Yeah, so I like that. I like that about eights. And, you know, and again, learning how to do something that's that's dangerous and technical, um, but but then, uh, you know, enjoying that process. And then here for the eight of cups, um, this one's a little bit easier for me to get on with than this image, even though it, it has a similar vibe, right? You've got the moon and it's a night scene. Um, here we have like eight leaks in our roof, in our house. And then the doors open and that that path is certainly beckoning us to just like walk away from this. So, you know, maybe maybe we've grieved enough. Maybe we've we've wallowed in our feelings long enough. And so the the transition from the eight to nine is saying, you know, okay, it's time to it's time to kind of get yourself out from this this stuck emotional place, this difficult and heavy and stodgy emotional place. If you have a positive association with the eight of cups that's not moving on moving on from things that don't serve you uh, let me know what that is in the comments i'd love to hear it so continuing on with nine now we come to the hermit and of course in the ye olden uh, tarot decks the hermit is depicted as he is here as an older man but often uh, a man whose body is is broken down so he's using uh, crutches or some sort of supportive aid to get around um, sometimes he's pictured with a stag with many uh many horns, many antlers, um, to suggest an older deer. And again, that idea of passage of time. Here we just have an older man with a lantern, and of course the, the connotation of a hermit versus something like father time is a little bit different. I tend to see the hermit as an eternal student or an eternal practitioner, someone who has gained wisdom through the repetition and the experiences of the eights, but who will continue to go on and do that for the rest of their life as well. They're so, they'll sort of never be done. And so if the eights are about starting your PhD, maybe the hermit is about being ABD, you know, all but dissertation. Um, you're not, you're not quite finished. Thinking about nines as triple growth, really hard, right? The the painful growth of the of the painful growths combined. So change is hard. Growth can be difficult, and to do that three times or three times three to get to nine um, can be can be tough. And what you need for that is perseverance. So perseverance. Um, going through adversity to get to your end goal, um, putting in the blood, sweat, and tears, uh, dealing with burnout, self-doubt, the idea of what if this is all for nothing, you know, what have I been wasting my time on, why am I doing this? And then also maybe selfishness, you know, concentrating so hard on this that you're neglecting your family or your other responsibilities and that kind of thing. Maybe being a, a, you know, a slave to your job or your career that you want to cultivate. And the idea of strain and difficulty. So, um, you know, nine being composed of, of four, which is stability, um, but also five, which is disruption and difficulty. So again, you know, thinking about that, maybe not being able to see how far you've come. You know, you've put in a ton of work in the eight and you're continuing that work in the nine and, and at some point you get discouraged or you maybe you lose focus uh, for a minute on, on what your ultimate goals were. 
And so pulling in devotion and stamina to help you through this period. So that and, you know, the images here, um, I think, support a lot of that, but we'll go through them. The keywords are interesting. So great strength for nine uh, really has nothing to do with adversity, but just having, again, having that, that stamina um, to continue even in the face of adversity. Uh, material happiness, this is kind of a weird one, um, for nine. So maybe it's, you know, you went to the, you went on a shopping spree and you bought all this stuff for retail therapy to make yourself feel better, but then you get it all home and you're like, okay, I'm done. You know, what was the point of that? That's kind of how I think of this. I also think of that as, as possibly being lonely. Like, you know, I don't know what Jeff, Be how many friends Jeff Bezos has or, or, um, or Elon Musk or any of those guys, but you know, maybe you're, you're sitting in your mansion with all your doodads and all your money and nobody actually wants to hang out with you. Nine uh, of swords, um, often, you know, and, and even I refer to it this way as the anxiety card at times. Despair and cruelty is the title. And it's kind of the outlier in these in these Golden Dawn titles, you know, strength, happiness, gain, and then despair. So it, it doesn't quite fit. But again, um, I think in the swords in particular, the cardamantic traditions kind of overruled the numerological ones, the Pythagorean numerological ones, or the or the Kabbalistic numerological ones that were kind of interwoven. So that's how we get to some of these like clunky uh, groups of keywords. But certainly that idea of burnout, of anxiety, of, you know, what is it all for? What does it all mean? You know, I've been trying so hard and I'm still not there. Um, that kind of a situation. And then also all of that being a conflict that's just in your mind. So if you could wake up from the nightmare, if you could take a step back and look at it, you would actually see how much progress you have made. And maybe that's actually where the sun comes in. So let's look at the sun real quick. So it's interesting here, we have day and night, we have kind of eternal, eternal student and then eternal planetary revolution. You know, the sun will always rise. It will always, it will always come back. It will always, um, tomorrow's another day kind of thing. So um, whereas I think a lot of our previous numbers, the, the lower number was kind of our positive association and then the upper number was kind of the, the difficult side of that. I think here we kind of have the opposite. We have, we have seclusion and burnout as our lower number, and then we have kind of revelation and warmth and, and kind of, ah, like, let's just go sit in the sun and make some vitamin D and feel better about ourselves for a minute. So that's kind of the antidote, I think, to this card as well. And then material gain, again, this image um, doesn't go so well. It kind of, it kind of balances here. So we've got the two rich people. And certainly, you know, you would have had to be very wealthy in order to practice falconing, which is what she's doing. She has a, a bird here that is a trained predator. And this is, this was a, something that rich people did because they didn't have other things that they had to do. I do see this also as a similarly a kind of a luxury card. And so this this was kind of like building up wealth and then how how you felt about that and it also can be the struggle i think to hold on to wealth you know again looking at you know how happy are rich people um they don't have any friends and they don't have anyone to share their their money with because they've driven all their friends away because they've been jerks on their way cr climbing up the corp corporate ladder and you know they're lonely and you can't hug a pile of money you know a pile of money isn't gonna pat you on the head and say hey i'm sorry you're feeling bad so how is that sort of isolating to yourself on a maybe less dour note um you could also see this as like being tempted or having saved up a certain amount of money but then still needing more to achieve your goal so you know you've saved up some money and you feel like you've got enough savings, maybe in case you were to lose your job, you could you could get by for a few months while you were looking for a new job, but you don't have quite enough money to put a down payment on a house or something like that. So yeah, nines, nines are kind of a mixed bag in terms of the visuals in this deck, but I think there's some consistency there about, again, the, the strain, the difficulty, but the determination to overcome that strain and difficulty uh, the perseverance to to work through that um, in order to achieve your goals. So let's look at a few uh, more comparative cards here. We have the nine of water and air and earth from the guy in tarot. So instead of a dude with a bunch of cups, we have 
you know, this person who's maybe been struggling through a cave and then they finally see the, literally the light at the end of the tunnel, right? This is the moment where they go, oh, it was, it was all worth it. You know, I am coming out of the darkness. I'm, I finally found my way or, you know, I'm, I'm about to reach my goal now and I just have to climb up this last little bit and scramble out of this hole and I'll finally make it back to the sunshine. You know, so this is like the night before you turn in your dissertation uh, and then you still have to go get, um, what do they call that, juried or, you know, you have to defend it still, but like you're almost there. So, you know, the nine of air, you know, again, you get this sense of worry and foreboding, but also this this promise of just being able to lean against something for support to kind of to take a breath and say, okay, this is really tough, but I, I can do it. I can persevere. I can, I, I've been through this before and I can do it again. And I don't need to sort of beat myself up mentally and make it worse than it actually is. And then for our nine of earth, it's funny, this is the, the artist of this deck, Joanna Powell Colbert has put her in, um, put herself in, in two cards. Um, and it's this one and the sun. So it's interesting that the sun shows up here for me because um, that's where she's chosen to to put her own likeness into her artwork. But here she is standing in a field of lavender, and it looks very luxurious and wonderful. But then if you think about, well, if you want to use this lavender, somebody's got to harvest all that and dry it and extract the oil and do something to it so it won't um, go rancid. So yes, you've grown, you've, you know, you've planted the seeds, you've cultivated the crop, you've diligently tended, you've weeded the garden, you've made sure it's gotten enough water, you've done all this work, but you're not done yet. If you want perfume or lavender essence or whatever you're going to make, um, you still have more work to do here. So I think this does kind of tie in with this theme of diligence and perseverance. A few more examples of nines from the Maraloon and the Fifth Spirit. These are this is so the fifth spirit nine of wands and the fifth spirit nine of pentacles and then the nine of cups from the Marloon. Um, again, looking at sort of uh, diligence, perseverance, etc. So here we have uh, literal burnout. We've got nine candles that have all burned down to their very nubbins and the moon is setting and then over here in the background you can just see dawn starting to break. So we're just, you know, we've, we've survived the night and we're about to gutter out the candles but here comes the sun at the end that at the end of that experience. Here, nine of cups. I see this this person as just sitting on a wall and kind of taking a breath. You know, whatever they've been through, maybe they've really been emotionally pushed, and they're just trying to recenter and sort of reground themselves for a moment because they've already they've been through a lot of emotional upheaval um, or difficulty, and they're they're trying to tap into their joy. You've got a rainbow back here. And then this Nine of Pentacles, um, I like better than the Nine of Cups image, um, or actually it's, it's kind of a, a blend of these two cards really if we move this over. So this Nine of Pentacles kind of references both of these images to me, but you know, here's this massive banquet, it's a dinner party, um, and you've you know, you've you've gone to all of this expense, you've bought all the wine and the food and you've prepared it all and you've laid it all out. I don't see anyone at the table, but that's not a big deal because uh, in this deck there aren't people in the numbered cards, so um, all the cards are like this. But so you've sort of put this all out, um, but you and, and maybe you're tired, you know, maybe as I get some sometimes like this. I plan a dinner party, I invite all my friends, you know, I go to all this trouble and then by the time they want to show up and actually eat the food, I'm kind of tired. So so that's that's part of that diligence, struggle, overwhelm, um, that kind of a thing. But, you know, nines aren't necessarily bad. Again, they're about growth. Um, it's just uh, it's just a challenge to to be able to grow and to expand, but it is also very rewarding. So going through these experiences gives us pleasure and gives us fulfillment in the end, um, but sometimes in the process they can be tricky. And finally, we arrive at the 10, hooray. So here of course we have the Wheel of Fortune and its corresponding card uh, numerologically in the RWS as it is presented is Judgment. However, I don't like it. I prefer the older, version of tarot decks where the angel, not judgment, the angel was the final card and actually the world would have corresponded with the Wheel of Fortune. So that's how I'm going to present this. Um, ooh, controversy. Not not only, but in part because you have this round, 
you, you have this round shape here um, and you have a round shape over here. Um, also, the world would would follow sequentially with the celestial bodies. So the moon, the star, the moon, the sun, the world makes a lot more sense to me than throwing judgment randomly in the middle of that. So I think judgment should be the final of the 22 cards. And, and I really feel like the world corresponds better with the Wheel of Fortune. So the Wheel of Fortune, uh, of course, talks about cycles, you know, luck, good or bad luck. In the Marseille, the wheel is actually pictured with a handle um, sticking out of it. And so there's that raises the question of, well, who turns the handle? You know, who influences the outcome of situations? I like seeing this as karma in action, the fruition of your past actions and efforts right? And if you are wise and uh, clear-headed, you can kind of look at what happens, and then you can, in part, trace it back to steps you took in the past. So you can see how your, you know, overcoming of obstacles and difficulties, and asking for help, and picking a new direction, and putting your nose to the grindstone, and sticking with it even though it got repetitive and difficulty, has now resulted in in this outcome. The wheel is also a powerhouse and I have seen decks where the wheel is pictured as like a water wheel or you know a giant gear in in a factory or something like that. So it's the thing that turns round and it turns round and round over and over again. It can talk about repetition and cycles and kind of never-endingness in a way um, for good or for bad. Uh, but it can also talk again about about legacy and power as as in being the source of power. So if we think about the source of power in society, um, handing down knowledge and resources from generation to generation, um, I really like that kind of an analogy. So I like keywords for the tens as things like legacy, a lifetime's dedication to a cause, completion, and then leaving behind something for the next cycle for the next generation, for the next person who takes over your job, or whoever's next, or whatever is next, you know, leaving behind some resources for that. Um, the Golden Dawn keywords don't entirely work for me. They do kind of match the pictures, so we can, I think it's helpful to know what the Golden Dawn terms are, so you know where <laughs> uh, the art came from. But then again, in terms of reconciling these as a group, it's a little tricky. Oppression, I don't always see that used. I usually see the word burden, and I still don't like that. To me, he's not burdened, or he's not unwillingly burdened, right? He's carrying this big bundle of sticks over to his house so that someone else can you know, build that new addition, or so they can have enough wood for the winter, or to burn for fires, or, you know, whatever it is. This is, this is tribute. This is contribution. This is offering. And it's a willing thing. Perfect, perfected success kind of works for me for uh, the Ten of Cups, you know, seeing all your efforts, all, all you did to uh, woo your partner, and you know work steadily so that you could make a comfortable life together and have enough money to be able to raise your children you know put in that emotional support for each other and now you're you're doing well because you've done the work and you've uh, cultivated a loving and and caring atmosphere um, ruin is a bit tricky and again this image is quite harsh i prefer uh, other kinds of images and we'll, we'll take a look at some examples but exhaustion if you don't succeed in the nine and you actually do burn out then that becomes the ten it's over it's done and the good news is that you don't have to go through that experience anymore because even if you failed at it uh, it's still over so you get to move on to something else so that's kind of the positive side of the ten of swords for me um, at least for this image and then for wealth, you know, if, if nine is material gain with that woman standing in her garden, then 10 is the wealth, the legacy, the trust fund, the contribution to the next generation that, that she can leave behind. And certainly you have, you have three generations here uh, depicted. So, you know, fortune tellery kind of uh, expressions for this card might be inheritance or something like that. So, so that, that pretty much um, fits. Getting back to this idea of the world and that representing sort of achievement, uh, right? Um, you're on top of the world. You've attained everything that there is to attain. And now this cycle of whatever it was is over. It's not really like the death card because it's not it's not dying. It is completed. 
it's finished and and you can feel good about leaving it where it is so that's that's the positive side i think of the world the wheel of fortune you know it, it can be high and low it can be up and down um it can be kind of a card uh again tom benjamin suggested you know stuck in the rat race you know a hamster a hamster wheel kind of a situation um, and getting nowhere, maybe feeling like you're getting somewhere, but really getting nowhere. And so that's that's the negative side, I think, of the Wheel of Fortune is is the bad luck or the or the constant um, sort of effort that gets put in towards a goal that that's never realized, wasted effort, essentially. Um, let's look at, again, some comparative cards and then we'll look at um, all of the all of the numbers together. I really like the guy in tarot for so many reasons. Um, one of the things I like is the, the depiction of some of the more difficult cards. Um, and here we see um, three of them. Um, the Ten of Fire shows destruction through a forest fire. Global warming, climate change uh, aside, before humans there were always times when natural forest fires would happen in order to cleanse and to kill weeds and to um, you know, distribute nutrients in a different way. And so this was a positive thing. It would it would clear out land in order to make room for new growth. So we can view the Ten of Fire in that way. The Ten of Air just shows a flock of uh, birds. I think these are geese uh, flying across the sky. And so again, you can get a much more open reading from this kind of an image than you can from, you know, someone being pierced through with a whole bunch of swords. Again, it's that idea of taking flight, of, of a season ending, and now we're migrating to something else. And then I love this Ten of Earth card because here you have this kind of overgrown forest area and you have this figure who looks older to me, just the way they're drawn, and they're, and they're walking with a walking stick to support them, and they're moving on. So, you know, they've, they've been the caretaker of this forest for many years. They were on the board of the, the town, you know, planning commission or the conservation uh, group or whatever it was. Um, and so they've, they've put in their hard work and they've managed to, to save this wilderness um, for future generations. And now, and again, they're moving on. Here we have some other imagery for the Ten of Wands. So this is the Maraloon, the Star Seeker, and then the Mystical Moments again. And I like each of these because I don't get the sense that it's an unwanted or an unwelcome burden. Again, I think I think this is the sense that this person has taken on this challenge and they've done a very good job of, of collecting resources and now they're going to do something with them. This this person's going to make a beautiful flower arrangement. Well, you can't, you know, you can't make flower arrangements until you grow flowers and pick the right ones and, you know, bundle them all up and carry them inside and, and you know, do all of that. Again, here, she's got a bundle and this guy as well. And he's got a very calm look on his face, you know, maybe a slight hint of concentration, but he doesn't look overburdened. He doesn't look unwilling. It, it looks more to me that he is pleased um, and satisfied that he's got this bundle of sticks to go back and build a shelter or, you know, start a fire or whatever needs to be done to provide for others. And then one more comparative set for you for tens. Um, so we have this ten of, uh, ten of Wands from the Fifth Spirit. Here you have the bonfire already started. So, you know, the person with that bundle of sticks has not only brought them back to camp, but they've, um, they've set them all up and lighted the bonfire to help everyone stay warm that night. Um, and they're, they're leaving that, like that's their contribution. Here you go. This Ten of Swords is kind of interesting, and I, I, I'm not sure I totally understand um, the image. I, I read a couple of entries in the guidebook, and I really, they kind of made me mad, so I'm, I don't want to go back and read the guidebook on the mystical moments anymore. Um, but it's interesting. She's kind of looking down. She's got this massive hairdo, and then she has ten people trying to help her maintain her hairdo. It's a strange sort of an image, but it is eye-catching. Um, I get that, you know, it's an alternative to being pierced or run through. Um, but these even aren't even like going into her hair. They're just sort of pointing. So I almost see this as like, oh, the committee finally got back to me with their comments, you know, or, you know, my thing, my, my artistic piece went through the jurying process. And now um, at least I know where I stand in terms of, you know, getting it into the art show or something like that. Like, like too many people had input, but at least now that part of this project is over. And then the Ten of Pentacles here, um, I just think is really beautiful. It, it, it's, it's part Ten of Pentacles from the Art of U.S. and part Eight of Cups. I mean, or sorry, Ten of Cups, um, because you've got this guy and then his family. 
and this giant log with all the tree rings and then the big house in the back. So how long did this tree have to grow to provide lumber to build this house? You know, how much hard work did he have to do to to build up enough uh, capital to build this this huge mansion for his family? And then um, what is he leaving behind for for legacy? So that's um, that's really the tens uh, comparatively. And now let's uh, as a final note, just look at all of the eights, nines, and tens together. So from those numbers individually, we can now look at the flow from the eight to the 10. So again, in the uh, wands suit, we have this sense of uh, coordination, of coming together of effort um, that you know is, is hard and it's wearing on us. But in the end, we can kind of gather our resources and provide for the next part of our project or for the next project. The Eight of Wands uh, looks at getting out of that stagnant emotional state um, into something maybe that we have to kind of push through or we have to reconcile in terms of that, that emotional struggle of the Nine. We have to push past, but then if we do, if we do that work and we're not just cut off or selfish about it, um, then we can realize you know, a greater fruition in our relationships uh, with other people. For this Eight of Swords, one of my favorite cards in the deck, but what I feel is most understood, that, that self-test, that self-setting ourselves a challenge in order to kind of hone our thinking or learn something at a deeper level or perfect our skills, um, that can be a huge challenge and may raise self-doubt. And we might think that we can't you know, overcome this challenge that we've set for ourselves. And whether we do or not, it'll be it'll be the end of it uh, when it is the end of it. I like to think that we come out of this and, and we're, we may feel exhausted like this, but we're, we're actually better off because um, we managed uh, to get through it. But however you read that progression uh, visually, you know, it is done at the end. And then for the eights, um, we have this diligent worker who, you know, through repetition, through careful saving and, you know, budgeting and planning over years, uh, manages to save up the money that they need to become uh, in a wealthier status. And then they may worry at that point about losing all their wealth. You know, if they've invested in, in risky investments or things like that, they may have anxiety about what's going to happen with the stock market or what's going to happen with, you know, that savings account. If if that doesn't end badly, um, hopefully they, they have a legacy that they can leave behind for the next generation. So yeah, so that's kind of my thoughts on how that all flows. And, you know, it's not perfect by any means. I think, I think the artwork is something that you have to kind of work with and make for yourself. And of course, none of these are set in stone. It really does depend on the reading, the other cards around, the question, the person, everything like that. But just some ways to kind of work with numerology and again, uh, work with it, not in spite of the pictures, but with the pictures, bringing the pictures along for the ride, even though you're trying to approach things from a more numerological or, or patterned um, way of looking at the tarot. So Again, I'd love to know your thoughts on anything that I've said in this series. I want to thank you for sticking with me. And um, yeah, I'm exhausted and burned out, but hey, we did it. Uh, we got through all four videos. So I look forward to uh, putting these out and seeing what the reaction is. And um, just have a great day. And I'll see you for the next series very soon. Take care.